away from home can be challenging at first. So it's very important to stay in touch with your loved ones and your support group. But eventually it becomes a really, really cool thing because you gain so much freedom and independence and you can do whatever you want whenever you want to do it. And it's fantastic. As an international student, realizing that home was a 10 hour flight away was a very hard pill to swallow. However, given time, I was able to make Edinburgh my home. Well, to start it off, it was really hard to make friends initially, but then I started to enjoy the city and I went to different societies and different events held, hosted by the university that made me meet so many new people. It is very hard at times of missing family and friends back home, but honestly, you just have to do your best to stay connected with them. Also, there are a lot of international societies that you could join here and I can assure you that you can find either a society or a community of people who you can call your home. I think living away from home is exciting and also very, it's a very crucial experience in terms of like having your own independence, to manage your own finances, to do your own budgeting, to have, to take responsibility of your own self. It gives you a big sense of agency over your own life and it's obviously tough at times and you do miss home a lot but there is a very good sense of community at Edinburgh. Which I'm from India and I really when it comes to like specific festivals that happen during the term time I do miss home a lot and thankfully there is a good community of Indian students here who celebrate those festivals with me and other people who are curious about my culture ask questions and get involved so everybody celebrates every festival together and it becomes easier day by day. Living with other people can be both rewarding and challenging. It could be rewarding because you could make new friends, you can actually spend so much time with people who you know, get closer to them, hang out with them, and you could do so many fun activities. But at the same time, it could also be challenging because you need to respect the other person's boundaries, you need to be considerate of each other, you need to make a lot of compromises as well. So. I think it depends from person to person, but I am right now having a really good time living with my close friends. I knew that I wanted to live in South Coast accommodation, so on the university's accommodation page I only looked at these. In addition to this, I looked at the price and the location. I wanted it to be within a good walking distance of the university and the nearest shops. So I lived in Pollock Halls in my first year, um, in one of the catered buildings. Uh, and this decision was really straightforward for me. Uh, I wanted to make my life easier. Um, and being in a catered uh, accommodation meant that I didn't have to cook for myself every morning and every night. I didn't have to go grocery shopping. And considering how much stress I would have been in my first year and like the acclimatization to a new environment, I thought it would just make it easier for my first year your transition into living abroad. And I also felt like it would give me the possibility to make friends and meet people really easily, especially other first years in the same situation as me. For me personally, self-catered has pros and cons. Uh, in terms of pros, it's been very convenient for me because I tend to have very irregular day schedules. So it's really nice to be able to schedule my meals around that and have the flexibility. I like being able to cook for myself because I'm quite a picky eater. Um, however, that does mean that I have to spend extra budget on food and I have to allocate time for cooking. Because I've lived in a cater accommodation, I was first of all very concerned that I would not get uh, food based on my dietary requirement. I'm a vegetarian but the catered accommodation really takes into consideration about each dietary requirement and not just in a way that it gives you like one additional meal for your dietary requirement it offers you a huge range of options that you can choose from they really keep that in mind so um it becomes easier to navigate food also um you don't have to 
go and like budget your week or go grocery shopping or come up with a meal plan for the week so in a first year experience you really get the time to then dedicate to other experiences but you can go out for society events get involved with other university areas um, and you don't really have to worry about food and budgeting for at least the first year so honestly i know people who've enjoyed both i think whatever you choose will work out for you so as i was in catered i think the pros are you know you're going to be eating healthy real food um, you don't have to spend money on a big shop um, it's kind of a really social opportunity because you go to dinner or um, breakfast with your friends the cons are probably it's less flexible so if you've got training at an, an annoying time it can be hard to fit around that another drawback of it is more expensive as as an accommodation choice um, but yeah i think it, it works there are pros and cons to both of them my cooking skills were somewhat limited so I've learned to cook this year in second year rather than kind of learning to move away from home and learn to cook at the same time. I am self-created and I have really enjoyed cooking for myself and learning new recipes. It's also fun to see my flatmates cook different recipes and learn from them. Perhaps a slight drawback is this, is that after a long day at university you don't always want to cook. However, I find that it's cheaper and more fun to cook for myself. I don't think I wish that I would have packed anything. I wish I would have not packed stuff and kept my road lighter. But yeah, I think if you research what is available in the accommodation, you will realize that everything that you need practically is available. So you don't need to bring everything. Just, just relax, get your essentials and everything is gonna be available. Make sure to bring items that remind you of home, like maybe small photo frames or wall decorations. So anything that reminds you of home, because I know for a fact, after a point of time, if you're far away from home, you do feel homesick. Bring your own extension leads. Most of the time, the plugs are located very conveniently, but you simply might not have enough, or you might have want them in a different part of your room. It's just such an easy thing to pack, and so you don't have to worry about it later. Bring extension leads. So ever since I've come to university, I've actually walked practically everywhere. Um, Edinburgh is really a walkable city and it's also very pretty to walk in. So despite having a bus pass and a bike, I usually just go to all my classes on foot, regardless of which campus they're on. Most days to get to uni, I take the bus and in Edinburgh and Scotland in general, this is really convenient because if you're under the age of 22, you can get a young Scot card, which allows you to travel on buses for free, which is so convenient. Um, but sometimes if I'm running late, I roller skate to uni. <laughs> As a student living in Edinburgh, it is very important that you make the most out of your time here while living on a budget. Always try looking for student discounts because trust me, it's a lifesaver. They have helped me out throughout my journey. And also I would say try shopping at thrift stores because they're really cheap and they're really good clothes. I would absolutely recommend getting a Young School card as soon as you come and getting a Uni Days account. Getting free bus travel really adds up and saves you a lot of money and I personally never make a purchase without checking whether or not there's a deal in uni days. <laughs> I think the top cost saving hacks for students has to be that before moving out and moving into a new accommodation there is a lot of stuff that is available for free within the university itself and it is advertised all over so before you go out and buy more stuff for your new accommodation just go into any of those university events where you get free stuff ranging from appliances to even like curtains and other amenities that you need in any accommodation you can get it for free edinburgh also offers a huge student discount especially during the starting of the semester in all of the stores so be mindful about those student discounts um, get your vouchers and start budgeting from early on it really saves money that way and also if you budget 
properly, you would not end up spending too much money on ordering food or going out. Allocating a budget really helps to not overspend.